So we have a case of 22 year old female admitted with the complaint of fever since eight days, rashes all over the four limbs since four days, difficulty in breathing, red color of urine and blood stain sputum and bleeding from gum since last two days. Patient initially was managed outside, but due to her worsening condition, she was referred to the higher center. So on the higher center, on the evaluation, patient was found at leukopenia, thrombocytopenia and hypoxemia. So she was managed with the oxygen, IV fluid and blood products as and when required. So on the outside hospital, her oxygen requirement was increasing gradually. Her X-ray was suggesting of bilateral fluffy opacity in mid bilateral mid zone and lower zone. At arterial blood based analysis was suggesting of severe hypoxemia. So she was started non-invasive anti support at outside hospital. So despite doing all the things, she was having a respiratory distress, she was having a hemodynamic instability and she was having ongoing bleeding. So he was, he was referred to the tertiary care hospital or Apollo hospital in Ahmedabad for further management. On arrival to our hospital, she was conscious, but she was having a tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension and severe respiratory distress. She was having a bilateral <coughs> capitations on auscultation. She has potential rest all over the extremity. So due to this hypoxic respiratory failure and hemodynamic instability, we have intubated the patient and we have started invasive mechanical ventilation. Uh, vasopressor was again started for the refractory hypotension. On arrival, uh, we have sent some investigation which was showing that patient is having severe thrombocytopenia, patient is having leukocytosis, patient is having high LDH count, CRP levels, level was also high, she was having also having an altered liver profile in form of SGOT is more than SGPT and her serum ferritin level was within normal limit. Her urine, renal, renal and liver function test along with the serum electrolyte and urine microscopy were within normal limits. 2D, eco, 2D echocardiogram was done, it was normal. Test for the malaria, malaria leptospira was done, it was negative. Uh, CCH dengue serology IgM by ELISA was positive. We have ruled out CCHF NIV Pune, it was negative. Uh, so she was uh, initially managed with the IV fluids, colloids, vasopressor, antibiotic and other supportive care along with the lung protective strategy. Uh, with this all the treatment, gradually her hemodynamic status was Im improved. Then her vasopressor requirement was decreasing and it was stopped on the day five. Her oxygen requirement also decreasing and and uh, so we have we are transfusing platelet as per the requirement for the persistent thrombocytopenia as this patient is having a hemodynamic instability patient was on mechanical ventilation so there is a greater chances of bleeding for this patient so we are keeping the threshold of around 20000 of 20000 of count for platelet to transfuse the single donor platelet to this patient uh, after 30 days of 13 days of admission Patient was extubated after successful single uh, successful uh, successful breathing trial. So we have so we ha we have uh, consulted the hematologist for the cause of persistent thrombocytopenia. So and uh, after consulting with the hematologist, we have undergone a bone marrow biopsy for this patient. So bone marrow was suggestive of increased megakaryopoiesis with normal, normal cellular marrow. So she was having, she was transfused multiple unit of single donor platelet for the persistent severe thrombocytopenia. During the whole course of hospitalization, patient was having received 15 single donor platelet and eight platelet concentrates. Uh, and patient, still patient's count, platelet counts was 7,400 on day 18. Uh, as the patient was uh, hemodynamically stable, patient uh, does not have any bleeding. So we have threshold our, we have increased our threshold to transfuse the platelet and we are not transfusing her in more platelets. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Mano Singh. Uh, so there is a comment here. Uh, this was one of the dengue patients which we saw uh, after a very long time uh, who had presented with ARDS. So the ARDS was very bad and actually First of all, we thought that it will be a swine flu because she was behaving like we had to go up on FiO2 of 100, PEEP of 18. So at PEEP of 18, we actually ventilated her for more than five days. We were about to actually prone her in the second day. 
but her compliance got better on day 1 after 12 hours and she started maintaining oxygenation so this was one of the very rare cases where her lung was so stiff on day 1 probably a lot of fluid was given blood products were given in the previous three hospitals before she came to us and because she needed a very high peep and she continued to cough the second week as well we continued to give her platelet actually till almost day 14 and as you can see on this slide uh, she almost received 15 sdps and 8 prcs but after she was extubated and she was doing well off pressures and she was not having much cough so uh, again the middle of the treatment maybe at the end of 15th day we actually stopped uh, giving platelets she was having normoxia she was fully conscious the major worry as dr mayuri is explaining to all of you is she never mounted a good marrow response so that is when our vnr hematologist decided to do the marrow and uh, now over to mayur and then we'll come back with discussion so persistent thrombocytopenia so for uh, rule to rule out the causes of persistent thrombocytopenia we have done ana profile of this patient which was came negative we have sent some viral markers like hiv hb hepatitis c that was also come come as a negative patient does not have any uh, past history of any recent blood transfusion patient uh, does, uh, does not have any menstrual history of uh, significant uh, menorrhagia in the past so we are left with uh, Uh, persistent thrombocytopenia after a long case of a dengue fever usually in dengue fever platelets will start improving on 8 to 9th day but this patient still having persistent thrombocytopenia after 15 to 18 days so we have as a we have started a high dose of uh, methylprednisolone for the 3 days but it does not improve the platelet count of this patient so we have Give, we have decided to give a trial of intravenous immunoglobulin to this patient so we have started intravenous immunoglobulin at a dose of 0.4 g per kg per day for 5 days and there was a dramatic response after the first or second days of first dose of iv ig administration and platelet was in, improved directly from the 9700 to 88100 after completion of the iv ig on on the day 24 of fbs1 she was discharged with the platelet of 158400 count with hemodynamically stable condition and with no bleeding from any side so we have discharged the patient with uh, tablet vizolon 30 mg od and we have asked for the follow up to this patient 